Here we go. You're listening to Brews and Blasters, RetroZap.com's free-ranging discussion about all things Star Wars. How we doing? Same as always. That bad, huh? With your hosts, Chris and Joe, two guys from Boston who are talking about this stuff anyway. Pokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. Let us go inside where we can discuss business over a drink. Anyway. This place can be a little rough. Not good. I don't like this. This is madness. Would you join me for a little refreshment? Everyone's invited, of course. I think you overestimate their chances. No, not really, no. I'm listening. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. We must be cautious. Welcome back, everyone, to Brews and Blasters, RetroZap.com's free-ranging discussion about all things Star Wars. My name is Joe, and joining me today, he's back. The scruffiest looking nerf herder I've ever seen in my life. Chris Dalton. What's up, everybody? How you doing, buddy? I missed everybody. I missed you. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, man? Ah, same old, you know, uh, just taking names, you know, doing my thing. Taking names? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Not bad, man. <laughs> Not bad at all. Not bad at all. <laughs> We're going to kick things off real quick here. We are. You know, I wanted to save this for later, but uh, I'm just going to open it right now. I'm open to the ghost. You, you are. Know, yeah, you know, I was at Target the other day, and uh, I just saw these Hot Wheels um, die-cast chips. They're fantastic. They are pretty sweet. Yeah, the, the, you know, the cars are cool, but I saw these, these ships are amazing, and they were only $5 at my Target. Yeah, you, can, uh, you can't go wrong. No, not at all. So I, I got all of them. Yeah, I would I would definitely much rather get the ships. Yeah, I got all five. Yeah. To write that in there. Um, and I brought two to work already. I brought the Falcon to work, and I brought the Y-Wing to work. Oh, sweet. Yeah, they're, they're on my desk. They're fantastic. I, you know, honestly, I love looking at them every single day. What's the weight? Is it a little heavy? It, it, you're going to feel in a second. I'm opening them up. I like how it comes with that clear stand that yeah. you slip over your finger. It's cool. You can slip it on plat. You know, fly it around if you want. Yeah, so when you're running around your house, it won't, you know, you can't drop it. I don't do that at work, though. <laughs> they they tolerate enough of my Star Wars stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, check it out. It, it feels good. Oh, it wow. Th that was deceiving. This yeah. has some weight to it. So the top is like metal and the bottom is plastic, but it's really detailed. Whoa! <laughs> I'm going to isolate that. That's going to be fantastic right there. <laughs> Oh, no, man. that's sweet. If I was to gonna get one, I, the only reason why the the ghost interests me so much is that they haven't really made much of it. I know. That's why I kind of want that. So they made the Falcon, they made the Y Wing, they made the Ghost, they made the Snow Speeder, and they made the Slave One. Yes. Yeah. The problem with the Slave One is it doesn't sit right on the on the uh, stand. Oh, true. It's just like horizontal. Exactly. You know, like if like if you never saw the Slave One like fly, it's how you think it would fly. Right, but it, you know, like not, not like a face. You know, but like if standing you uh, up. if you put that ring on and make a fist, then you're you're ready to go. Oh, <gasps> you're so right. You know what I mean? They didn't show it like that. But it's not going to work on my desk, though. No, no. I need to modify it or something. Gorilla glue, super glue it right to the. <laughs> right oh, to, yeah, right to the wall. Can I borrow some gorilla glue? Yeah. All right. You can glue anything. Really? Pretty, yeah, you can probably glue me to the wall and I'll stick. That's really. I, I don't know what's in that stuff, but it's the best <laughs> glue in the world. What if I uh, what if I just put you on a peg? Yeah, yeah. Any, I glued metal together, and I'm like, this ain't gonna hold. Yep, yeah, it held. Really? Yeah. What about like wood to metal? 
any anything. One time, I, I, I was super gluing something, true yeah. story. And I was holding it because I, you know, you have to hold it in place. Yeah. I glued my thumb to my shorts. Oh, that happened. Before. And I went to rip it <laughs> off. Chunk of my skin on my shorts. Oh, yeah. That's true no good. story. Not no good. lie. So, um, you know, I, I usually have a lot of figures on display. You know, not a lot, but a few. I, I always cut my R2-D2 on display. Always. And, uh... You're lucky R2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um... You know, R2, R2's been, R2 and I have been through a lot. Mm -hmm. You know? That little droid and I have been through a lot together. Yeah. <laughs> it makes sense. It's true. And, uh, you know, R2 had a casualty. I mean, he's not mint or near mint or good. But, you know, he's, he's important to me. He's right up there. Right up there. And, uh, one of his legs does not move anymore. You know? Uh, kind of frozen. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, he's super glued. Oh, I super glued that baby right there. Guess what? I did not know that. No, and you never know by looking at him, and now everyone else knows. Yeah, everybody knows. Yeah, man, we get a jam packed show tonight. We do. Yeah, we get a, we get a lot of things we get to get to. Um, you know, I thought this was gonna be kind of a light light week because like we're gonna get a lot of. I thought we were gonna get a lot of information at San Diego Comic Con. Yeah. I don't know. So. uh... Still early. Yeah. Today's the first day, right? Yeah, a lot of stuff happened. A lot of stuff happened in the past uh, two weeks. So mm -hmm. we're gonna, we're gonna recap some stuff. We're gonna talk. You know, we get an Oppo sighting. We do. Yeah. But, uh, all right. We have a good buddy of ours waiting in the wings. Let me just get him on here. His name is Mike Audette. He writes for RetroZap.com under the Audette set, where he's giving his opinions and he's giving his thoughts on the Star Wars universe. Mike, you there? Yo. What's up, man? What's going on, guys? You, uh, you might be our first guest on Bruising Blasters. First guest? Yeah, I guess if you don't count, uh, Riley. Oh, he... I, I count him. He kind of guest host. He, like, kind of co-hosted with me, but, uh... Yeah. Chris and I, together, have never had a guest on. Oh, right, yeah. 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 What better way to break the ice? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, you know, nothing like an ice cold, super cold. Yeah, um, always when we're, uh, dying of, uh, thirst... This, we really need to get sponsored by yeah, Coors Light. Yeah, there's nothing better that quenches our thirst, but uh, a nice cold Coors Light. Yeah, super nice. cold. It's we, really, yeah, yeah it's really yeah. delicious. We call them <laughs> super cold. They're, 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 they're really Coors Light, but... Uh, Coors Lattes, we called them back in the day. Oh, Coors oh. Lattes, oh. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's so smooth and creamy. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to drink like 30 of those on Saturday. Yeah. Oh. Coors Lattes. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh, man. All right, Mike. So the three of us here, we read Dark Disciple. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Chris, what did you think of it? I loved it. Mike? It it, it was everything that I thought it was going to be, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about you, Mike? I, yeah, I, same. I completely just could not put it down once I started reading it. I finished it in like two and a half days in between work and, you know, everything else. But it was just... Could not put it down. It just drew me right in. Like yeah. I felt like the characters were there with me. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I this book was fantastic. I gotta say, I gotta say, it's probably my favorite book of the new canon. You know, definitely. Yeah. Same for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I made like this resolution to read everything in the new canon, from comics to books to anything I get my hands on. Um, yeah. That's Perfect. what I did with the new when they declared legends and they were like, "All right, yeah. this is the new canon." I was like, "All right, well, luckily I would never really got into anything before that point, so I was like, "All right, new movies coming out, all new canon. I'm doing everything." Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I've been there, but it's it's kind of getting away from me. I mean, there are uh, some some Jason Fry young reader novels I haven't really been able to get into yet. Um, the ultimate star wars i haven't read that yet i mean it's it's already getting away from me so yeah I'm it's, sticking... it's a little hard to keep up with it all yeah i mean so i'm sticking to uh the comics and the books right now and yeah uh, that's what i'm pretty much doing yeah yeah man so dark disciple crazy um i could i really i like i couldn't believe how far they took quinlan voss i know you know um and yeah yeah, like going to the dark side, coming back, he was really on the fence right up until the end. You know, 
I would have really liked to know how those episodes would have aired. Yeah. Because there was so much crazy stuff, so much uh, <laughs> stuff that, you know, that never mm-hmm. it never really happened before, you know? I know. I mean, they yeah, were, like, you go we've back. never seen anything like that in Star Wars before, ever. Right. No, I mean, we've seen love stories. We've seen yeah. The Temptation of the Dark Side. But we've never really seen them done in this way. I mean, you know, the temptation of Anakin, the entire time I was kind of com- trying to compare and contrast to like Quinlan to Anakin. Yeah. Uh, being both unorthodox in their own way, but yeah, Anakin was, he, he was more tragic, almost more unwitting. Right. And and Quinlan was more like, very headstrong. He went, he went head first into the dark side. He's like, yeah, let's, Let's get it let's done. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah, this is what I need to do to be stronger. All right, cool. Let's do it. Yeah, I can do it. It's like, whoa. Yeah. I'm totally stronger. This is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, did, 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 did my eyes just turn color? Wait, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. What do you want me to do, pretty lady? Do you- okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It was like, Asajj was like, he would he would have ran through like a brick wall if she told him to do Exactly. Yeah, I mean, and there's something to be said for that about the, the nature of falling in love, but... Um, it's interesting how she became more on the light side at the same time. Oh yeah, she was completely driven to the light side because of him. She saw the goodness in his force ability. Yeah, mm-hmm. she broke when she saw him turn completely and his eyes like go yellow. Oh yeah, yeah. That's when she was like, "What the hell?" You know? Yeah. That's when I was like, "What the hell?" I know, right? <laughs> you know, because I was like, <laughs> "They set a great distraction. She got you." Yeah, you yeah. just gotta go. Just go. go. Yeah, yeah. Did we announce that this was gonna be spoilers in this? Oh no. Well, if you're listening for here on <laughs> out, there's gonna be some spoilers. Come on, yeah. Oh, uh, I'm gonna have to put that in the description. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's out, and we're we're talking about it. Um, we really haven't said anything that spoilery. No, no, no. We haven't said anything yet. So no, we're gonna get there though. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you should definitely read the book uh, if you haven't read it before. Um, I I feel like I want to dive right back into it to see if there's more I can kind of get out of it because there's there's so much information about the Night Sisters. Yeah. The, mm-hmm. Oh yeah. The character <laughs> of Dooku as well. I mean, he's he he's he looms over everything like this presence that you really don't feel in episode two or three right or even in the yeah. Clone wars you know he's not like a henchman he's looming as this great power oh yeah and i'm like it's dooku right you know i'm like well he's he's cool but he's you know like he's no he's no sidious but i guess they really built up his power and they they really showed just how formidable he was yeah, yeah. But at the same time, I like that they showed, like, his weakness, him being injured. I like that. You know what I mean? I always like seeing somebody in power hurt. Yeah. You know, it, it's not like the Incredible Hulk. Like, okay, when are you going <laughs> to, like, show weakness? You know, like... <laughs> yeah. He was still as a human. Yeah. Yeah. It's like most of... We don't really see that from a lot of different people in Star Wars. Like, I doubt we'll ever... The only will never see Vader like that, you know, like getting weekend where it shows them not as all powerful as they can be, you know, like with Dooku, you can do it because his story is already written. Yeah. So we can, you know, they can definitely do that with other, with characters like him and what they did to Asajj, but like Vader or the emperor, they're never going to show like, them getting hurt or not like just physically hurt, but like in a mental state, like in the force being, you know, weakened and showing that somebody could have killed them. You know, they're never going to show that. No, I think we've seen enough vulnerability about, about from Darth Vader. I mean, yeah. Episodes uh, five and six, the Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi really showed Vader pretty vulnerable, especially Return of the Jedi. He was as vulnerable as can be in that movie. Mm hmm. Um, and we, we spent a long time with Anakin being very, very vulnerable. And, uh, you know, Rebels and uh, the Darth Vader comic series is doing a lot to, to I wouldn't say right the ship, but definitely balance the character. 
uh, and make him, you know, show him as formidable as he really was and as strong as he really was. Because oh, I think especially in Lords of the Sith, oh, I mean, yeah. he is just a one man wrecking crew from <laughs> the start of that to the end of that book. Like yeah. I, I just loved seeing him just house people in Lords of the Sith. <laughs> it was fantastic. It, yes, it was so awesome. Yeah, I mean that's the one that that's really the one reason to read that book because that is fantastic. Yeah, um, you know I'm gonna give a spoiler here uh, for Lords of the Sith. If you haven't read it, you know go read it. But uh, he's in a Tie Fighter and he was like, oh yeah, I can use the Force for my Tie Fighter, and he yeah. decides to kill Buzz Droids use it that way. He's yeah, like, I'm just gonna blow them up that way. That's awesome. And, uh, yeah, like he takes out uh, droids attacking a uh, a Star Destroyer. Using the force instead of like using anything on on the plane because that's more efficient. Because he learned I think that. My favorite part was where he launches himself through space. <laughs> yeah, using the force into another ship. Well, he got a mask, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like he's air pressurized, so it's fine. That's a great. I mean, like, great idea right there too. I need yeah. to read this. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. I I haven't read it. Yeah, the audiobook is really good. See. I'm not a I'm not really like a book reader, you know. Like yeah. the comic books were like, oh, cool, I'll read those comic books. Um, that's why Doc Disciple. I was like, oh god, this is gonna <laughs> take me a while, three days, and you I'm like, right through it. E e exactly even, right. Yeah, even Alexa was like, are are you gonna come out of the room? And I'm like, <laughs> leave me alone, no, you know. <laughs> I know, right? Because yeah, like I really wasn't much of a reader before I started reading like the new canon, all the new canon novels, and like now I love it. You know, I can't stop. Yeah, right. So I have degrees in English and history, and it took me forever to read this book. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I kept talking to you about it, and I'm, and you're like, I'm not done yet. I'm like, ah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, oh, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, but it, just because time, really, and that, and probably yeah. forgetting how to read. Right. I don't know. <laughs> it's all going backwards for me. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's it, it's fantastic. Um. To see more of Asajj Ventress as well. Oh. What a character. Oh, yeah. You know, 10 years, more than 10, when was she debuted? She was debuted in the Clone Wars micro series. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was back in like 2004. Yeah, 04, something That's, right before Sith came out. Yeah, yeah 04 and 05. Right. The, first, the first series in 04, the, the second series in 05, right before Re Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. And yeah, um, it, it, yeah. I mean, she was a very one-dimensional character there, just an assassin. She didn't even have eyeballs, let's be honest. Right. You know? And uh, it was like an, an assassin right there, and from there, she moved on into such an interesting character uh, with the Clone Wars, and learning more and more about her um, with the Knights of the Trilogy, and you know, out of all the characters in the Clone Wars, she, she changed. She moved forward. She moved from a... Uh, be you know the Sith acolyte to a bounty hunter, and mm -hmm. you know then then to something else. I, I'm sorry, a Sith acolyte into a Night Sister, Night and then sister. to a bounty yeah. hunter. Night Sister, then to a bounty hunter. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you don't see that a lot in Star Wars. How quickly characters move. You're right over there, <laughs> Mike. Yeah, I'm fine. Why? Oh, okay. I'm here. I'm hearing something over there. Oh. Um, okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's 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 um. They really developed her character in a way that you don't see very often. Yeah. Um, you know, because once you become a Jedi, you're like, you're a Jedi. Mm -hmm. Which kind of goes into what Quinlan Voss was saying about him not really having a story. Right. In the book. Uh, which is, you know, interesting. Because like, this guy's been on so many adventures and has had so many stories, but he doesn't have his own personal story. Right. His He's story is the Jedi story. Caught up in work. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like it's like when you're doing a plumbing job. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah exactly. You you, you know, you can tell the story of the plumbing job, but... Yeah, I, I have endless stories of plumbing, just like he had endless stories of missions he went yeah. on. And then it's like, hey, what about your personal life? And you're like, uh, yeah, yeah, good question. You know, uh, <laughs> TV and couch, cool. Yeah. yeah. If it wasn't for Bruising Blasters, I don't know social life at all. <laughs> you know, the thing about uh, Ventress is 
it's like she kind of like just got forced into like being a bounty hunter. There was nothing left for her, you know, like everything yeah. was taken from her. It's her only line mm -hmm. of work. She had to freelance. That's why when when during, you know, during watching the Clone Wars and she came bounty hunter, I was like, of course. Hey, here's an interesting note that I noticed. Uh, there's a bounty hunter guild. Did you notice that in the book? No. There's like a union. I mean, yeah. Yeah. What, what's up with that? You know? I it's essentially it seems like it's run by Boba. Right. Oh, okay. So he's trying to yeah. unionize those guys. <laughs> he's like the organizer and he'll choose like different groups to go on missions and stuff. That's like at least what I got from it, you know. But he's you know, it's always like the usual gang of like Dengar and Bosk and whoever yeah. else. See, I, I kinda I kinda thought they had like a union hall on Coruscant. You know, like where they had to like pay their dues to become like a you know, a licensed <laughs> a, bounty hunter. Like a <laughs> Like a privateer like a almost. They're like, hey, it's six bucks a week, everybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know? Like, you know, so they, they were all angry at her, like, going out on her own, which is... What's crazy, it seems... Because taking, it's taking stuff away from them, and they're not getting anything from it in the f form of dues and stuff like that. Yeah, I suppose so, you know? But it's it's interesting to see such an interesting uh, little tidbit there, you know? So I was like, oh, okay. So when... uh so. So when Vader called in all the bounty hunters to uh to find the rebels, that was a union job. Yeah, <laughs> right. seems, yeah, pretty seems much. like it, right? Yeah, you know, like that's kind of interesting, right kind there. Kind of makes work, sense now. Yeah, worked with the union, right there. He didn't, he didn't go outside. It's kind of cool the relationship with Boba and Bosk, you know, because yeah. it's, they seem to always be together. They do. They hang out. You know, I'd yeah, hang out with I would hang out with them too. Absolutely, yeah, man. Yeah. Not Dengar though. I. I what do you think about Dengar? He's, he just seems like, uh, he seems exhausted all the time. <laughs> he does. <laughs> oh, yeah. He does, so actually. Yeah. Like, dude, sleep. Yeah. Like work in, work in, out a little bit. Yeah. Get some energy. In that Clone Wars episode, he's <laughs> yeah. just like sitting in like a rocking chair. Yeah. Like, just like he seems like a grandpa who would just be sit, like <laughs> sitting on the porch drinking a, a glass of iced tea in a rocking chair. Right. And he's 22. He's looking out. <laughs> It's cool because that episode is the episode where Ventress puts Boba in a box and they yeah, kind of right. have that little debate like, why should I help you out? Yeah, you know? exactly. Where was Aura Singh? All right. Right? Is she still in jail? Because didn't she get oh, locked up? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Did she? I think she got locked up for trying to assassinate Padme. I think so. Yeah, you're right. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. we got to watch The Clone Wars. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> like halfway through the rewatch. Really? I, yeah. I, I've been, I want to be fully dedicated and it, everything's just too busy right now. Yeah, I know. I just want to yeah. take, I, I take off like, like, a, like a week. Winter would be like the perfect time to start this back up. Yeah. You know? But I really want to watch it now. Oh, exactly. I know, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm really drawn back into like the the world of the Clone Wars. Right. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. After Dark Disciple, definitely. That's why all I kept thinking about was like after reading that, you know, we saw a little bit of uh, Quinlan, and it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can we see him again? Can like, we see some more? <laughs> yeah. I gotta yeah. be honest. Like the episode that Quinlan Voss w premiered in, you know, I liked so much of it, and I hated. I, I honestly, I hated so much of it too. Really? Um, yeah. I I wanted. I, I was always intrigued in Nal Hutta. Like, the home mm -hmm. of the huts, like, that's... It, it was so weird and cool and interesting and exactly what I thought it would be in that way. Swampland, kind of. Kind of, yeah. But then you have, like, Jabba's mother there. Yeah, like, with slugs yeah, on weird. her or something. Uh, just stupid. <laughs> and it just... Everyone talks in a stupid voice. And it's like... And then you have Quinlan Voss on, like, a surfboard, like, being, like, Poochie from The Simpsons. You know, like, <laughs> hey, Kenobi, lighten up, buddy. You know, like, and it can always like, oh, Quinlan, I hate you. And I, it's like, what, what, are you what are you doing? I like, to, I like to think of Quinlan more like the dude from Big Lebowski. <laughs> yeah, like, he was totally the dude. He literally had, he had a surfboard in that episode. Come on. Yeah, like like in your video, Chris, he's got in the, um he's got in the action figure, he's got like a surfboard. He does. Yeah. He has like that speed board he or a, something. He had a jet surfboard. Yeah, yeah. the fig is they awesome. Actually, they actually made him like a surfer dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, he has the dreads, the long hair, <laughs> tattoos. Like he. Yeah. I mean, if I just looked at him and then hid his fro the voice on the yeah. phone was, I'd be like, uh, nailed it. I guess. I guess. I, I, I guess that's what he would sound he like. He belonged yeah. more on Point Break than he did in Star Wars. Oh, great honest. movie. I know. I know it's a great movie. It's one of my favorites. 
Yeah. That, now you just made me like him even more. <laughs> <laughs> but he did. He belonged hanging on a Bodie in Point Break. You know? And he John, would fit in perfectly. He totally would with the ex presidents. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. Oh, man. Now, now, we're, now I'm thinking of Dark Disciple. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Point Break crossovers. You know what was nice? I don't know if yeah, all of it was. Back. <laughs> I don't know if it was um, fully aired on StarWars.com or or anywhere on YouTube. It probably was on YouTube. Probably. But at Celebration Anaheim, we had that panel of the Untold Clone uh-huh. Wars. Yeah. yeah. And we saw all the um, the sketches, and we saw a lot of the unfinished um, like episode-type Yeah, type I saw a little bit of the animatics there. Yeah, yeah. and um, a lot of that helped paint a picture, because as I'm reading, I'm like, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, completely. You know... It's interesting because I think they did things with the book. Christy, uh, they, Christy Gold. Yeah. Talented yeah. writer. Really. This is my first book by her. Unbelievably talented. Uh, I have to say the way she was able to paint the romance and the, the love between uh, Quinlan and Asajj was just so believable. Uh, so, uh, super talented. Yeah, exactly. That's just what I was going to say. It felt so real. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't forced at all. Um, no. But the the way she was able to get into each character's head uh, from a real genuine place, not a contrived, like, this is what she feels, this is what he feels because that's what the script dictates. No, like, she got into their heads from a very believable place. Yeah. Like, Quinlan was a happy go lucky guy because he embraced the force in the right way. You know, he was happy to come home. See, he he loved to see Kenobi because Kenobi was his brother. They grew up together. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was. It, he loved being in the temple, seeing people. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Just sitting in the cafe eating lunch. Like yeah. He, I mean, he, he just loved it. He wasn't like a hermit. He just did his own thing. It was home. Yeah. But yeah, he loved coming home. And he loved seeing his fellow Jedi. Um. So that was that was fantastic, and I don't know. If this would have worked as well as uh, as uh, eight animated episodes, I just don't think you'd be able to get into the heads as well as we did. Uh, I don't know with if the they book. would have been able to air some of the stuff that was in the book, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, because I yeah. think like some of that stuff was what Christy did herself yeah. that was you know, out that wasn't actually in the scripts, but she put it in to make the book. Like, I don't know if like the part with the sleeper would have been, <sighs> yeah, I mean, it could have been in the episodes, but it wouldn't have had the same feeling as how it was written. Cause like you, the way it was in his Voss's mind of how he was looking down in the water and all that, like that wouldn't have transferred as well in the episode you know you could have just because you would have just seen like him jumping in water and then killing it with the force yeah you wouldn't have seen like what is what he's actually thinking what's going through his mind you know the recognition of the fact that he was doing something bad and he didn't want to do it i was gonna say like how yeah he did it anyways felt so bad for the yeah it's just a beast like the the rancor is just a beast he knew full well well the rancor was trying to kill him i mean he had to do what i did hey he was hungry (laughs) Well, it's true. Why Why wasn't the keeper feeding him? Because he was eating everything. Oh, bird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He's like, three for me, one what? for you. Oh, man. That's <laughs> terrible. It is. I don't think he would He would treat him like that. But I think it's just like any other beast. Like, is the Whomper, like, is he a, you know? No. He was probably like, oh, my God, food. I've been surrounded by snow and ice. <laughs> Oh my God, dude! Ta- Tom so bored of Tauntaun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <that's> right. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, frozen Tauntaun again. I hate this frozen food. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I don't know. I mean, in those situations, they were being attacked. Mm. You had to do what had to be done. But in this one, Voss, first of all, summoned an animal that didn't need to be awakened. No. Brought it to the surface yep. when it didn't need to be brought there. Uh huh. Controlled it and had it in submission. And then decided to go even further and, uh, you know, end its life. Do it. Do it. It was very. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> very, very similar. Um, and 
it was a great dark side initiation in that way because he didn't want to do it, but he was he was there. He was like, oh, I'm going to do it anyways, and I knew that. And he, right. You know, I don't know. I felt, I felt like I, like I found a, a field mouse in my house last year, and I felt that way if I had, you know. Yeah. Taking it out. Luckily, I didn't have to. But I was like, oh, man, I, I don't want to do that, <laughs> you yeah. know? I don't, and I felt that way about a little mouse. Yeah, I don't kill things <laughs> either. No, I yeah. don't. No. You know? So, it's messed up, man. Right. You know? So, I, I, I totally felt that scene. Uh, I, I, I guess that's what I'm saying. Me really. too. Was, and you definitely, I don't think you could have got, got away with that on, on uh, Comedy Central. No, Comedy, Cartoon Network. Right. <laughs> Comedy Central, yeah. Yeah, no, that would be a totally different show. <laughs> <laughs> um, Another thing that I've always wondered is, like, in this part of the, like, this part of the series, did Boba have his, like, Mandalorian armor yet? Oh. They never said. Right. I was expecting to say if he, he had, like, his Mandalorian armor yet. I want to know. Well, yeah, I'm sure they probably kept that out on purpose. Well, what was cool yeah. is the Untold Clone Wars panel. He had it. What the, He had it when they were going through that whole shuffle with uh, oh. Dooku. Well, there were episodes that were supposed to show how he got the Slave One back. Oh, that would have been awesome. Right? There, there, yeah. there were supposed to be episodes that, that explained that, but uh, they never got air. I'm sure there's so much more that would have blew everybody's mind. You oh, know? yeah. They had Seriously. episodes up to up to season eight past Order 66. They had a whole, whole season they were going to do that was past Order 66. Taking Kyle Newman's advice. Yeah, that's awesome. They had Ben Quadineros taped. They did. And he, <laughs> he was yeah. voicing them. He was yeah. voicing them, yeah. 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 Chris, what are they so at they probably had funny. an they probably had an Oppo Rancis like solo story. You want to know? <laughs> hey, you know something? Oh hey, they had his lightsaber. They had okay, listen. If they just had him in the background, that's one thing. Yeah. Now they get into the lightsaber. They made assets. Okay. The, the, he's gotta be in so some kind of action. They Why? Made, they made the character. They made the lightsaber to go in that character's hand. Something was happening. Mm, yeah. I mean, you don't just do that. That takes a long time. That takes manpower. Yes. Or woman yeah. power. It it takes power, you know, time to make that asset. It was so, gonna happen. Yeah. It was in season six, so obviously they had it done. And I got <sighs> robbed of that by <laughs> by Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Did you get the Darth Maul reference? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not bad, buddy. Um. Yeah. Yeah. But they did mention Oppo. They did right at yeah. the beginning. And yeah. um, I love it. I yeah. Want... What are you oh. doing with it, Chris? I want to show you. I don't know. You probably seen it. I have seen this. You, you, oh, you get the picture there. Whoa! And actually, I haven't seen this. No, this he, is a, yeah, a it, character model for Oppo. Man, he he's really long, dude. Is t- yeah, yeah, with his tent tail extended, he's like what twelve feet? Yeah, yeah, at least over ten feet. Yeah. probably. yeah, yeah. Well, I wonder who would have voiced him. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Oppo ran oh. this with a Boston accent. That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. he looks like he'd be from Boston. He probably. Drink a little bit of uh Hey guys, I'm taking the stairs. They're like, <laughs> all right, one episode. You're, you're done. <laughs> oh man. Hey, where's uh, the speeder? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have an iced regular <laughs> yeah. from Duncan. Hey, where's Oppo? In the parlor. <laughs> Eating his supper. Eating his supper. <laughs> Oppo, go to the packy. <laughs> Pick up a couple of cores like. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I can see that. See, nailed it. Yeah, I've, I've been, always said they need a, they need somebody with a Boston accent in Star Wars. Yeah, I feel like they have a little bit of everything but that. Yeah, yeah seriously. Yeah, they don't really have a New York accent, do they? I'm sure there's somebody that's like, can I have a piece of chocolate cake? <laughs> no, <laughs> maybe. Maybe there was that episode where that cake boss guy was in it. It, it wasn't Cake Boss. It was the other guy. Oh, don't even think, don't even get started. Do you remember the, that? I remember the cake episode. Don't even get started. And that was so long ago. Oh, that was so bad. That was not good. That's when they were really finding their way. They were kind of like, yeah. They, but that, but that was a that was a thing. Like that guy actually voiced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that happened. Yeah. So why yeah. not me? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh man, free of charge. Free. Free. Wow. 
Just goes to show you how much that voice talent is worth. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Imagine if my only line was, "I'm like as you wish." <laughs> They're like, <laughs> at last we reveal ourselves to the Jedi. <laughs> yeah. They're like, "You're, you're a Jedi." You're an Oppo. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm a Sith. <laughs> what, if, what if you just recorded everything wrong? Yeah. They like, like sound like a snake. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. What, what should I say? Yeah. Hiss. Yeah. Hiss. I'm, a, I'm in a garden. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's kind of uh, like um, Bosch talks. Oh, true. True. That is true. He's got like the little hiss after everything yeah. he says. Right. Yeah. D voiced them, didn't he? Yeah. D Bradley Baker so. did yeah. Him, yeah. That's awesome. He did so many voices. It's he insane. did. He did hiss, man. He did. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, don't, th- I don't think Oppo would hiss. No, I don't want him to. Because no. it, it's too um it's too snaky. What yeah. What if he uh sounded more like Santa Claus though with like that, that beard? Because <laughs> <laughs> he's got the big white beard. <laughs> oh man, Oppo Ranch is a stock. <laughs> no, nothing it to do with Dark that. Disciple whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not saying stop, but just... Right. <laughs> or maybe sound like a wise wizard. Thou shall not pass. You! <laughs> You're a wizard, Anakin. <laughs> Did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, do you ever think Anakin ever went to Oppo for advice? He went to Yoda, but I don't think he went to Oppo. I think so. He probably was like... Yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna go. To, yeah, I'm just gonna he, go to Yoda. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if he thought it was like Yoda's room and he knocked and he's like, "Oh, Oppo, hi." Oh. oh. And he's like, "Hey, hey, come on in. Let's hey, talk. Let's talk, about the, yeah. let's talk about the Force. Get over here. Get over here, you crazy <laughs> kid. Oh, when I was your age, I didn't have legs because <laughs> I'm a snake. <laughs> oh, he's like, "All right, I gotta go find Yoda." <laughs> I wonder if that's. I don't think it's still canon because in the um those Clone Wars novels there, he had like um like force ability to like war no. war meditation or something no, like that. I don't that. want to talk about that. But you it, know, I'm I'm not a big fan of like weird invented force abilities. So Real, you don't like Quinlan's touch an object and you can <sighs> see what the last person touched because that's definitely canon now. It's yeah, psych psychometry. Um Yeah. Yeah, I'm well, he really, used that in the, the episode he was in too. Yeah, I'm on the fence with it. Like, I really don't like the idea of people having all these special powers that they only have. They're the only person who has it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it just it's a little too superhero-y to exactly, a, yeah. a mystical energy force, energy force that is constant throughout the universe. Right. Um. So like, that's kind of something. Like, gifts are okay. Like, you know, but people seem to have very, you know. They seem to understand, like, the gifts make sense a lot of times, like being able to see the future. Uh, when you when you are in tune with the Force enough, you get to kind of do that. Force healing? No. What are you talking about? That was, uh, well, it was a thing. Yeah, forget that. No. Force healing? No, <laughs> no Wolverine has Force healing. All right? No, Not like, a Jedi. They, like they healed someone else. No. No. Yeah, I mean, they use the Force to, like, revive people, like, from unconsciousness. You know, that, that can happen. But that's kind of like just tapping into their, you know, their like aura, almost like their energy, you know. Yeah. Using the living force in that way, but like healing them, like that's that's Wolverine stuff. Um, I mean, even like Anakin kind of used a little bit of psychometry uh, in Episode Three, right? Or did he not? When he when he's in, when he's in Padme's apartment and he picks up the uh, the tablet, and he goes, oh, "Obi Wan's been here." Oh right, yeah. Oh, you're right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. yeah. So he kind of he kind of felt that, you know, and it makes sense for Anakin to kind of have abilities that lesser people would be able to have too, you know, and because he was so powerful in the Force, right? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's kind of already there. Um, Quinlan seemed to really kind of lean into the psychometry and be able to mm-hmm. really do it pretty well, but uh, yeah, so that's why I'm kind of okay with it, but I don't like the idea of just granting rando. Superpowers to to Jedi, not cool, you know. So I don't. I hope that's not a habit that that comes in. Like that whole Shatterpoint thing. I know it was like an entire novel in the Legends canon. Hated it. Hated that because why would um, Mace Windu only have this one power? This is the Force. I mean, this is this is everywhere. Right. It's yeah. You exactly. know exactly. 
Yeah, I, I don't know. That, that That's always been my personal opinion of it. Right. Um, I know that there are people who disagree, and that's cool, too. Um, that's, what, that's what fandom's all about. Right. <laughs> just debating it. Um, well, you never know what's going to come. You never know. You, you know, know They could stick to one thing, and they could go totally to another thing. I don't know. Hey, the new trilogy could be entirely about superhero powers. Who knows? Right. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. Um, and, you know, some people would debate, like, even being able to, like, jump high and run fast are, like, too much, too. There are some people who are, like, hardcore, like, sticking with pretty much only things that were done in A New Hope. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's very little. They they, they, right. they didn't even move anything in, in, in no, A New Hope. Yeah. Uh, so that was kind of, like, debuted in Empire Strikes Back. So, I mean, that's... You think about how the Force progresses as time went on. There's so much more that can be done. Right. now yeah i like i like i like the balance that they've gotten with it of yeah from like the prequel trilogy and the clone wars it's like it makes sense now you know yeah there's nothing insane nobody's like can't die or anything you know everybody's equal pretty much based on everyone's, how the force allows them to act pretty much yeah everyone's mortal there there's no one who is above that because they're powerful in the force. Yeah. However, I will have to say one thing. I'm pretty sure Asajj Ventress is the first person to ever die from force lightning. Yeah. That we know of. Yeah, like that I've ever seen in the, you know, in canon the canon. work. Yeah. Um, no, people will say Vader. I'm going to say no because I'm writing something. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> um, uh, if... Vader didn't save Luke. Luke definitely was going to die of Force Lightning. Well, he didn't, though. He, right. And he took a lot of it. Yeah. He took a lot. He definitely would die. From though. Emperor Palpatine. I'm he, telling you, I would die. If that guy kept Force Lightning, I would be like, I'm going to die. Maybe, but maybe not. Because, you know, Luke took took it like a champ for a long time. They cut away and came back, and he's still taking it. Hmm. You know? Like, Vader went out to lunch. He got a sub. He came back. <laughs> yeah. he's, still, he's still getting... Uh, Getting shocked over there. Getting shocked, yeah. Right. Father, please. Steak and cheese. Small. <laughs> <laughs> please. Bye, for no, no, he was, yeah. I mean, it was, it was a long time. Um, Maybe the emperor just wasn't going full power, though. I, no, he wasn't. And he kind of said, it was like, now you will die right yeah. after that. But, you Turn know. Turn up the, like the amperage. <laughs> yeah, he turned, yeah. Up, turned it up a notch. <laughs> uh, but who knows what that, no, we never saw it happen. And we never saw it, uh, you know, uh, Dooku shocked, uh, well, the Emperor shocked Yoda. Dooku shocked, um... Anakin and Obi-Wan. Yeah. Yep, they didn't die. No. Uh, yeah, and, uh, Yoda could catch it. Right. I mean, Yoda can catch the stuff, just absorb it. It's not that big a deal, uh, for someone who's trained in it. Um, yeah, where else have we, have we seen Force Lightning? In the canon works. I mean, no one has really died from it. I mean, and even Vader, if you want to go with the the, the traditional theory that he died from picking up the Emperor while he was doing it, he died from a mechanical failure, not from the Force Lightning. Yeah, so, the Force Lightning itself didn't, like, stop his heart and kill him. No, he didn't die on, on sight from the Lightning. Not at all. I'm sure it fried a lot of his wires. It, yeah, it, that's what eventually led to the cause of death was his suit failing because of the lightning. Well, let me tell you something, Mikey. I disagree. And I'm going to... Really? It. Yeah, well, that's coming soon. That's coming All soon. All right. Um, it's a little tease right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little tease. And I'm doing a nod and a wink. <laughs> <laughs> but she was in rough shape. Like, rough yeah. shape, man. I'm telling you, I think... This is my theory. I think that she... Well, all right. Let me back up, because we were talking about uh, the ability to see the future. When... She accepted the light side completely, and right at the end of her life, she saw the future. She saw what was going to happen to Quinlan Voss, and she saw her place and where she needed to be to save him entirely. Uh, so he was because he was going back and forth with the dark side at the end, and yeah. she she put herself in front of that force lightning, knowing what it would do, and I swear. Because she saw the future and she chose that, she gave up her life in a willing way, almost like, almost in the way that Kenobi did, in in a, in a, like a different sense. It kind of felt that way to me. 
because I've never seen anyone else die from a force lightning. Right. I'm sorry, I just never have. Definitely not she, from Dooku. Yeah, she she gave herself to the force. Yeah, and she yeah. like Obi Obi Wan did. Just she she knew what she needed to do to save Quinlan. Yeah, and it was it was. I mean, it's not necessarily she completely accepted the light side, but she completely accepted the force in in total. Yeah, and she was just like, all right, this is what I have to do. This is my yeah. time. This is what this is how I'm doing it. Yeah, exactly. And I, I that you know that's why you kind of saw the uh, the the scars from the force lightning go entirely through her. She accepted that lightning in into her body through her mm-hmm. body. I mean, think about that. Luke was unscathed. Luke wasn't even a burn mark. He wasn't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He wasn't even smoking. I, I think he was smoking a little. He did a smoke little a little bit. You're right. Yeah, oh, okay. I, I think I saw some smoke. Okay, so a little bit of smoke. All right, the smoke. <laughs> the smoke is confirmed. Smoke confirmed. Smoke. <laughs> yeah. I, so you know, she died a hero, and what I did. really like is that the the Jedi Council really respected her. You Finally, know? after Obi Wan oh, put yeah. him, put, yeah. him, put them in their place, and it's um it's nice to see that she got like that that respect. You know, she got the respect that she did, it, but not before Obi Wan put them in their place, though. Right. He's like, well, mm-hmm. guys. What are you? What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> really? Like, you, like assassination attempts? Are you kidding me? That's not who we are. They were gonna kill Voss. Yeah, yeah. They were gonna execute him. They were gonna. Yeah, exactly. What are like, they doing? That's like, why I was like, they, they're ordering a lot of death right this now. This is like the, the, the <laughs> low, lowest point of the Jedi Order. Like the Council had really, really lost their way. I think they were so frustrated with this war that they wanted it end. Yeah. And they didn't. They just they wanted. They didn't it. care about but the consequences. Yeah, yeah they're they were like, just just, to, they oh, were not. Serving, we gotta get this done. They yes. were not serving the light side of the force anymore. They, they were. That was like the last thing they were thinking of. They were right. just trying to like, yeah. how do we get this done? I don't know. They, they they just had completely lost their way as Jedi. Right. right. You know, ordering this stuff. They just didn't even know what to do. But I it was mean, like shoot first, ask questions later for them. Like yes, yeah. You know, we'll kill everybody we need to kill, and then we'll deal with. What happens after and restoring the peace afterwards? Yeah, not that's how they were looking at it. They <laughs> yeah. were like, "All right, we just we gotta end this now." Yeah, not, and then we'll deal with the <laughs> aftermath. Yeah, they lost their way it's a little not, bit. That's but not I'm, the way of the force, though. I'm I'm happy yeah. they listened to Kenobi because uh, I don't know that, that it would have got a little weird in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, it's great to see Kenobi realize more than everyone else as well. Yeah, because he. You know, Yoda had his moment where he saw everything in his in his arc, mm-hmm. and I kind of think after that he was more resigned to allow things to happen as they were going to happen. Yeah, he was like, "Go on, I want to listen to this." Yeah, everybody whatever. else was like, "Get her out of here, no way!" Yeah, we <laughs> yeah. don't trust her. I mean, once he met Qui Gon in on Dagobah, it was, you know, fair game. He's like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this war go as it goes, and I'm already training for something bigger." Right. And I think Kenobi, not, Kenobi wasn't there yet, but he was in the right mindset. You know, he, yeah, he was already he was already on that path after talking to Qui Gon too. Perhaps, perhaps. I mean, but I think that he saw how far gone the council was at that moment. It was like, what are, what are we doing? We got to yeah. stop. Like this is ridiculous. What we're doing right now. Yeah, yeah. And how much did Kenobi and Quinlan drink? <laughs> like yeah, oh, I love that. I love seeing Kenobi the man, you know, because they could have met up somewhere else, like at a bagel <laughs> shop or something. Yeah, but no, they yeah. went straight to a bar. Yeah, not back yeah. to Dex's diner for him. Right. No. I was gonna say, yeah, they're gonna met at Rex's. No <laughs> Jawa juice. <laughs> nope. Hit the sauce. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she kind of had a Boston accent. She's like, over here, sweetheart. Or that was like New York or something. Yeah, it was a little, yeah, little northeast. A little bit. Yeah, you're right. She, yeah. yeah, she had a little uh, ton- tinge to it. Yeah, the, yeah. the diner talk. A Di- little yeah. diner, yeah. For sure. You want a cup of Jawa juice? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. There was no real R's in there, though, so you really couldn't tell. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Hey. Wow. Yellow lightsaber. Yeah. You know, did she construct a new lightsaber or uh, was that kind of like, did that did that crystal change? I think she must have had to make new lightsabers because if you remember uh, in season five, 
Doesn't she lose her lightsabers to Barris? Yeah, you're right. Mike, good job, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, because that's how she, like, you know, kind of frames her in a way, kind of puts it off. Can we ever get a story of someone going to get a new lightsaber? For, uh, for the God. Like, <laughs> see, really? I know. I want to see that. Yeah. No, we never see anyone get a new lightsaber. No. You know? Uh, Ahsoka get a new lightsaber. Right? They're getting crystals somewhere. They're getting them. They're, it's like, they're, they're getting them out of nowhere. They're just, <laughs> yeah. they're just appearing. The black market. They're like, hey, I yeah. need a kyber crystal. They go, yeah. What color? They're going down the Linway. <laughs> they're going down the Linway, my, down on the Linway and go yeah. and get some. <laughs> you know? Whatever. They're just selling them everywhere. Discount price. I was going to say that promo poster I have, it looks just like a straight, like, uh, saber handle. Yeah, it's, you not, know? it's not the same handle, but I wonder if they, she had the same crystal and it changed color. Because didn't Ahsoka's lightsaber change color when she left the Jedi Order? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. know if that happened. I don't know. Because I, I think I think Dave might Dave Filoni might have said that she yeah. has new lightsabers that are more uh, like a samurai style. I noticed that. I noticed that. So I'm not sure if that means she actually constructed new ones. Oh, okay. Yeah. She, I, you know, she, like after leaving the Order, she might have like threw her actually like her jedi ones out so yeah. she wouldn't be recognized as a jedi but where where are these crystals coming from this is a, these are supposed to be hard things to find i know maybe she went back to ilum <sighs> i don't know <laughs> nuts <laughs> yeah it's those are questions that we probably will never get the answers to no i want them i, I want them i know yeah. no we, we're gonna find dave and just like lock him up and put him in a room and have answer all our questions. You know, okay, buddy. He, uh, <laughs> he, we, do, uh, we are not going to do that, by the way. You know, <laughs> no, I know. What's nice is he, he loves this talk. You oh, know, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, Dave? Yeah. And, and he will spend all day. Yeah. You know, like when I, I briefly ran into him and all I said was, Hey Dave, thank you for putting the open. Run. Yeah, that was my one question, by the yeah. way. Like that, I had one thanks, yeah. one thing to say to him. And You're I leading was, the Operances front. You really are. <laughs> I was like, Hey Dave, thanks for putting Operances, and he was like, Did you see his lightsaber? And I'm like, I sure did. I did. <laughs> hey, you want to take a picture? And then, then that was yeah. it. <laughs> but remember, I like two years before that, you talked to him before yeah. that, and you're like, Hey man, Operances, you're gonna get him in the Clone Wars? Like, I'm trying. Yeah. Well, he told me this awesome story about it. Yeah, yeah. He was supposed to be in that episode with, and he there was going to be this long drawn, uh, dragged out fight between Oppo and uh, Savage Press. Really? Yeah, and he was like, "You wouldn't like how it ended." <gasps> and I was like, "Dave, as long as you put him in there, like I just <laughs> yeah. wanted to see him." And he, yeah. and then I was walking away. Oppo's, he, Oppo's noble end. <laughs> yeah. And when I when I was walking away, he was like, "Hey, I'm gonna try." Years later. Guess what? He's in the background, he but he's there. He, he made it. He did it. He's in there. Yeah. He did it. You guys saw eye to eye. Yeah. And no one else, I'm, I'm guaranteeing you no one else is talking more operances like you are to Dave Filoni at Celebration 5 when you have one chance to talk to the guy <laughs> <laughs> for five seconds. Yeah. No one's saying operances except for you. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that, that's good to know. I mean, I, yeah. I say it because I, I truly do like operances. It's like, I think he's a really <laughs> yeah. cool guy that deserves some more screen time. Yeah, I know. I, I hope we get to meet Jerome Blake, the actor who played I hope one, so one too. of these days. Yeah. I hope so. I'll be like, dude, you have no idea how much I'm pulling for this character, dude. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> until, until we tell him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, I guess that, uh, that wraps up Dark Disciple. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. I really, you know something, I really hope, you know, because I keep thinking with all the Clone Wars, um, extra content. They we're had getting, more scripts. There are more scripts out there. There's more. And I, I'm this just cap. hope it was like, you know, we got some Maul. Yep. We got, you know. Well, we need a little more Maul, oh, though. We, we need a lot more he's Maul. Still, yeah. He's still out there. We need him. Yeah. 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 He's bouncing around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um. You know, we just got Doc Disciple. Mm -hmm. I know that this, there has to be more. The, yeah. I think if this was a trial for, can we make novels of Clone War arcs? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it worked. Oh, yeah. It worked. This is literally the the best I've read uh, in, in canon so far with the new canon. Like, do it. Mm -hmm. Keep it coming. I right. want it. Yeah. So, you know something? If we get them in novels, that's good enough for me. You know, I'll take it. And, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, I think like, like the novel form of Star Wars storytelling is jumping up my list of favorite medias to get Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm right there. 
Uh, like it's it goes like the movies, TV show, and then novels over every like novels is probably tied with television for me. Wow. Yeah, I'm 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 really loving the comics myself as well. I gotta say. Yeah. You know, I know that during celebration a kid asked Filoni, like, maybe you should release your sketchbook. And he had a huge smile on his face and he was like, Well, if you guys keep on them, you know, keep asking, just maybe, you know. <laughs> and I would uh, pay so much money for that. I know, for real. No way. That it would be cool because you know it's probably like this huge oh, book yeah. of awesome stuff. That God, you know something? I, I guarantee you once in a while he's probably like sketching something that would have been cool <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah that's for sure all right mike thank you so much for coming on bruising blasters um absolutely yeah well I'm, we're gonna have to get you back on here soon definitely yeah it was great yeah for sure all right man have a good night hey mike i'll see you soon buddy yeah we'll see you saturday all right man sounds good see you then later bye nice kid awesome <laughs> <laughs> yeah man uh gotta love that dark disciple oh it was great it really was yeah and uh just remind you you can find mike odet on the odet set on retrozap.com he's gonna be coming back with a lot more he wrote a great article about uh kenobi recently and uh he has a spoiler free review of dark disciple but i guess at this point you've already <laughs> you've already listened to this yeah so uh they can read my review which is full of spoilers as well read it all read it all it's all good <laughs> stuff oh man chris we have we have more we do have more. We got more. This is a jam-packed episode, buddy. It is. Let's keep it going. So, uh, San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah, started today. Just started today. We're, uh, we got a lot coming on uh, tomorrow, actually. Right. Tomorrow's like Star Wars Day. Exactly. Um, I'm hearing some scary stuff, though. What do you mean? Here, there's gonna be, uh, you know, I thought there was gonna be a trailer. No, that's confirmed. There's no trailer. Well, it's not from the official site. Oh, that's true. Maybe they can be throwing us off. Be yeah. like, hey guys, no trailer. Guess what? Bob trailer. I mean, every <laughs> major outlets are saying no trailer, but you never know. Crazier things have happened. Mm -hmm. Um, they're they're also saying that uh, three and three quarter fans will not be pleased. It's gonna Ooh. be focusing way more on six inch at San, San Diego Comic Con. Okay. Yeah, uh, I I hope it's not the end of yeah. three and three quarters. And I don't think it is. I really don't. I just. I'll tell you, I I like I I I don't I love the the black series. Yes. six inch, but the three and three quarters. That's home. It's home. Yeah, it, it's what we all grew up with. Yeah, definitely. and I I don't want that to go away. You know, the black series three and three quarters. I think they should make every figure like that. Yeah, definitely. Because they're all they're all amazing. You'll, you're, you're not going to get the detail though. I mean, it, it's it's a different type of figure. They spare no expense. <laughs> John Hammond. Yeah, yeah. But it's true. They re that's they why really, like yeah. I, you get the black series three and three quarters, and I'm like, uh, yeah. So uh, I can't find one thing wrong with this, <laughs> and it's it's a great figure. Yeah, they're they're pretty amazing. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I need my three and three quarter though. The cards look good. Everything looks good. They're, they they don't break the bank. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I want to get a million of them. You know, I'm not gonna be able to do that with the black series. If they keep doing six inch figures, yeah. Bye bye card. It's gonna be more like hello box. Yeah, it's all boxes. Yeah, and uh, I mean, the, I think they've proved the six inch has. There's a place for that. The black series is beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, the six inch figures are great in Star Wars. We, we do not abandon the three and three quarter, though. No. Kids no. need that. Yeah. You're three, you're three, four years old. You need to have a three and three quarter. Right. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. It, it, it's just a different experience to have that right there. Wow. You know, I'd, I, ra I'd rather have a lightsaber in the arm that pops out than yeah. have like a six inch with accessories when I'm, when I'm a little kid. Right. You know what I mean? I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Ho hopefully, um... I can't see it going. I really can't. I can't see it going away. How are they going to do a two pack with two? Well, actually, they, yeah, they can. But it's just, no, they can do uh, anything. But. Yeah, I just, <laughs> I just don't want things to get too overscaled. You know, like the yeah. when things get bigger, I like to call them statues. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the black series is almost. I, I display them like statues. Right. You know, so yeah. I mean, that, that's kind of where we are. Yeah, so what do we get tomorrow? We got a, we got a lot of things going on tomorrow. We have uh, 
Publishing. It's going to be making a uh, big news um, from Del Rey. So we're gonna, you know, I'm, we're definitely going to hear more about Journey of the Force Awakens. Um, we're talking about Friday right now. <laughs> I'm saying tomorrow. Uh, yeah, Friday. Friday. Um, we're going to hear from Hasbro. So we're going to hear from something. I mean, I mean, we're probably talking about Force Friday on, on uh, September 4th. Okay, cool. You know, I mean, I'm sure this is what all of this is leading up to. Um, Maybe a little sneak peeks. Yeah. Hey, they released the covers this week for uh, all the journey to the Force Week and oh, stuff. Oh, cool. Yeah, they look fantastic. I got to tell you. I didn't see them. The young reader novels look amazing. Like, really. I want to get them just for the covers. Yeah, they look really good. I'll show them out. I'll show you after the show. Yeah. Um. Yeah, there, there's other panels about, like, collect, you know, Star Wars Collectibles update with Lucasfilm's Anita, Anita Castellar. Star Wars goes steampunk. And then, um, Friday, 5.30 to 6.30 Pacific time, Kathleen Kennedy and J.J. Abrams and Lawrence Kasdan will be talking about Star Wars The Force Awakens in Hall H, which is like the big the big hall at San Diego Comic-Con. So, why do they have Hall H if they're just gonna like not do something big? I mean, that's right. where the big stuff happens. That's where the announcements are made. Yeah. I'm telling you, it has to be a trailer. It has, it has to be new footage. It has to be something. It has to be. They wouldn't bring out KK and JJ. I love how much. And LK. Like, <laughs> how, they're doing so many of these events, and I love that. Yeah. Well, this is a big one. Oh, yeah. It's huge. People are saying D23 in August is going to be a, uh, you know, more, you know, more information. But I don't think D23 is a place to give you Star Wars information because it's not Lucasfilm. That's mm. Disney. Right. You know, it, it has to follow the hierarchy. It has to fall into Lucasfilm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm not there. <laughs> I wish I was at San Diego Comic Con. I've never been. I haven't either. We should go one of these days. We really should go. Yeah, we should. Yeah, you and I, I think we should do like a lot of research and then go. Yeah, I'm sure. Like when to line up. I, I, I it gets hectic. It's gonna be. It's it's the uh, granddaddy of all conventions, really. Right. Yeah. I mean, Star Wars was there before the movie came out. Right. It was there in 76. Hey, remember the uh, little golden books when you were a kid? No. Take a look. You'd remember. They had the gold gold seal on the side. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the yeah. pokey little puppy and uh-huh. stuff like that. Yep. Star Wars stuff now. Nice. Yeah. All six movies are going to get little golden books. Cool. Yeah, pretty cool, right? Yeah. I, I think they look pretty good. I think so, too. You know? Uh, take a look at the covers. You see them? Yeah, I'm seeing them. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, Attack of the Clones, man. Looks it looks good. I'm kind of liking this uh, geometric arc um, art. I mean, it, it looks great. Yeah. I mean, look at that. Revenge of the Sith as a little golden book. Are you kidding me? Movie accurate images, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look, look at the Return of the Jedi one. Jab is huge. <laughs> I love it though. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm literally. I think I'm gonna pick these up. That's really cool. They that look they cool. They're throwbacks. Yeah, yeah, pretty good stuff. Oh yeah. By the way, Daniel Craig's not a stormtrooper. It's confirmed. Yeah, he confirmed. He's like, no, are you kidding me? Why would I do that? You know, for actors, it must be so like funny to read the rumors. You <laughs> it know, must be. like he was probably. I bet because I'm sure he's a busy guy. He was on pi- the set of uh, Pinewood. Uh, while he was filming Spectre at the same time. And that's where this rumor came up from. That's oh. That's somebody it. just saw him drinking a tea and they were like, whoa, he's yeah. in it. He's in it. That's it. That's it. And he was probably like, what? I was drinking what? a tea, man. What the? I know, right? What happened? No, like, that, that's all he was doing. So he's like, no, why, why would I? Like he, all right, here's his quote. It, it's, it's amazing because it, it's so reasonable. You know, why would I ever bother doing something like that? Craig tells EW. Effing hell. <laughs> Playing an extra in another movie? <laughs> he's James Bond. That's he pretty has, funny. I mean, really. I mean, he's, he's he's done four James Bond films, not to mention a bunch of other movies. I mean, he doesn't need to be a masked stormtrooper. I mean, uh, and, and guys, like, really. I'll read that. That's a great way of putting it to make us not believe it. No. no. I don't... No. But he does make it does make sense, you it's know. True. But I'll tell you this right now: I don't I don't care how like big of an actor I was. Yeah. Something that's so close to me, I would be like, 
I'll be anything in that movie. That's true. I don't know if he'd be like, I'll be anything. I, I don't know. Like, we, it's not even worth his time, though. You know? Right. But if he was there and they were like, hey, buddy, this will be funny. You want to just do this real quick? I swear it's like an owl. Uh, I bet he did it. Uh, I, if that's the case, I bet he did it. Yeah, he was probably like, all right. <laughs> I mean, if you if you if he did it, he probably doesn't even want anyone to know. Right. So that would be a great great way to uh, throw it off. Maybe that was just something that uh, like a personal accomplishment. Yeah. Like, like if there's ever another Star Wars movie, <laughs> I don't care. I'm gonna be in it. Yeah. Oh man. Hey, so um, Star Wars finally got its own official app. Yeah. <laughs> We've never had it before. It's pretty awesome. Pretty cool. We were playing with it uh, right before the show. Mm -hmm. I downloaded it yesterday, but uh, I only got to it today. Uh, looks it looks cool. I want to play with more of it though. Right. Um, uh, our own Courtney Martin on uh, RetroZap.com. She uh, posted a great a great picture on Twitter. I guess is a uh, a way you can like make yourself like take a picture of yourself and plug it into like a. Uh, you become like become a Jedi. Shut up. Yeah, yeah. So you, so you're like in the robes. Oh, that's awesome. She did it with her dog. It's it's hilarious. I think I've seen that. It's hilarious. I saw it. Yeah, that's funny. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna download it now. She's the best. Yeah. Well, it looks great and it sounds great. So I'm already sold on it. The app. Oh my god, it looks great. Well, I'm sold on almost anything Star Wars. So. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I I I can't wait to like pretty much end the show and just stop playing with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what else do we got here? We got we got so much stuff. We really? Got... Oh man, this, this requires more different music here. What should I choose? What should I choose? What do you want to hear? Um, Battle Toads. I don't get that. <laughs> what are you What are you doing? What are you doing? There's been so much talk about that lately. Battle Toads? Yeah, I don't want to get into it, but I mean, no. have have you been seeing it like around? I saw it today. It, it's something I saw when I was like nine, and now all of a sudden I'm seeing it again. It was kind of a terrible game. Let's be honest. All right, it was vo it was voted a very hard game. Yeah, it's super hard, too hard. <laughs> it's not it's not good. All right, Battle Toads not not. <laughs> nah, nah. Nah, it's it's cool. You know, look back on a Battle Toads. Yeah, yeah. We all know Battle Toads, but whatever. Give me Mega Man too. Right. I'll take it any day. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, in, in, in other news, <laughs> in, Han Solo is getting his own film. Yeah, this is huge. And, um, Star Wars Anthology. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to talk about this. Yeah. Because there's a lot of directions this can go in. And, yeah. um, it's confirmed that's a young Han Solo. Yes. I mean, this so. is Chris Miller and Phil Lord who did the Lego movie. Yeah. And 21 Jump Street. Yeah. So, I mean, these are guys who are not like. You know, they're not... Uh, it's comedy. Martin Scorsese, you know? They're right. not... You know, they're known for their comedy, but they're... You know, I think that levity is going to add something yeah. to whatever they're going to be doing with, right. with Han Solo. And you know what? I think Han Solo wasn't a very serious guy for most of his life. Right. You know, so I think there's probably enough there to be, you know, a lot of funny moments in Han Solo's life. Yeah. You know, or just moments where he didn't really take a lot seriously. So I think that's cool. Well, I... I would like to. Well, I'm sure we'll eventually find out in 2018. Yeah. But um, is it going to be him meeting Chewbacca, forming that relationship? Chewbacca. Yeah. Is it <laughs> is it going to be um, you know, him doing his like little runs and deals with Jabba? The Kessel Run. Yeah. So it's it's there's so much stuff. Like yeah. Is it going to be him and Lando? Is it going to be him getting the Falcon? I, I. Is it all of it? Is it all of it? Is it all of it? Ex there's a lot. Him and Boba Fett. Boba, Boba Fett. Fett. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there's um, th there's quite a bit, you know. That and, they can uh, really cover. Yeah. You know. There's a lot. Yeah. Are we ever going to finally see Corellia? Corellia. Corellia. You know, where Han Solo is supposedly from. Oh. And I, where the the Falcon is made. Yeah. I, He's It's a Corellian Corvette, right? No, that's not it. The Corvette was uh, now the... Rebel the blockade all, runner. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. But uh, Corellia, man. I mean, well, the, the Millennium Falcon's a Corellian ship as well. So, you know, maybe we'll finally see Corellia in, in uh, Ken. I'd like it. Well, th wh whatever they decide is going to be awesome. I'm just saying a younger version of Jabba, R. Chewie, R. Han, Lando. Yeah. 
any of that is really cool. How do you, well, we already saw a younger version of Jabber in the Clone Wars. Oh, true. Didn't true. look much different. It, it it didn't. No, it didn't. You know, and, but this would be even younger, I'd imagine. Yeah. You know, and Phantom Menace. Well, it, it wouldn't be even younger. I mean, all right. So if Han is like, I don't know, twenty thirty two maybe, in A New Hope, that would put him, like what, like. I don't know, like, like pretty much like a little bit younger than Darth Vader, you know? Right. You know, so kind of born in the prequel era. Right. You know, probably born sometime between, uh, probably born around the Phantom Menace time, I'd say, right? Right. Yeah. You know, if, if he was 10 years old in Phantom Menace, he'll be about that somewhere around there. The age difference was that much though between Luke and Han and A I New thought, Hope well Luke is 20 and uh, I thought Han was like Th about I would say 30 30 uh, latest 32 right yeah about that it's hard to tell with 70s guys right yeah. that 70s hair right. really we were talking about it earlier Biggs how old was Biggs I know right 45 I couldn't tell <laughs> yeah 38 I don't know yeah. come with me to the academy Luke yeah <laughs> you have a mustache and I yeah. don't have facial hair yeah like that that mustache did wonders for his age, <laughs> really did. I mean that that guy wasn't getting caught at anywhere. Right. No. Yeah. No. 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 That people call him sir. Right. And probably the cape too. The cape probably adds a few years. Yeah. You know you you take it really seriously when you get a cape. Right. When, especially when you wear it like Biggs did. You know, Lando too. Very true. Lando. You know Lando was 15 years old in that movie. <laughs> it was the mustache. And the cape that made him look look older. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's true. You got me thinking about the ages, you know, and yeah. like when Han could have been born because it's something I didn't really put a lot he of thought into. He must have been born around the time of the Phantom Menace, if not a little bit afterwards. You know, so that's yeah. the, we kind of know the era that he was growing up in. We just don't know the situation that he was growing up in. No, he could, I don't think he could have been because Phantom Menace, Anakin, was how old? Eight? Nine? Ten. ten? Yeah. So if he was ten, because by Return of the Jedi, he's like an he's like in his sixties. He has to be like no, 50s, he's, 60s. He's only in his forties. He's only in his forties. Yeah. Well, how old was he in Revenge of the Sith? Do we know? All right. Uh, all right. So he's ten in Phantom. Yeah. Ten years in. More in in, so he's clones. twenty. Twenty there. Three years later, in Sith, he's twenty three. Twenty three. Add twenty years on that. Forty three. Forty three. Okay. Um. Add three more years onto that. Forty six. For Empire. Forty six. Add one year onto that. Forty seven. He's forty seven years old in Jedi. Man, he looks old. Well, he got burned. Yeah. You know, it's been in a been in a suit for a long time. It looked rough. Right. And Sebastian Shaw was and demonstrably old. older. Yeah. You know, no, let's figure it out then. Right. But uh yeah, no, he's you know, forty seven. Mm. So So yeah, I'm I'm uh, dying to see where this this goes. I, I would really like to see like the birth of the relationship between Han, Han and Chewie. Yeah, I would that, definitely like to see that. That would that'd be really cool. Yeah. It'd be pretty cool. Um You know, and, and judging from the Lando comic that I'm reading, I mean I'd love, to, I'd love to see Lando and, and Han and, you know, just the world he's he's living in. Right. It'd be very cool. Scoundrels, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, sure. we're, we're going to probably see a lot of that. And it's being written by Lawrence Kasdan and his son, John Kasdan. Very interesting. That's cool. Yeah, so there's two teams. It's Chris Miller and Phil Lord directing. Lawrence Kasdan and John Kasdan um, writing. Very interesting. So, that's all we know. So we got Rogue One as one anthology. Han Solo is the second anthology. Is another anthology to be made. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Now these standalones are they anthologies? Get, yeah, are they yeah. are they getting their like own trilogy? Like, is it going to be no, like Han Solo I, one, two, and three? They haven't been. It hasn't been announced yet. But like, who knows? Rogue One, two, and three. Because if that's the case, like, oh man. I mean, I don't. I don't think so. I think they're supposedly supposed to be one shot stories. One and done. Yeah, but you never know, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you never know. They could go Marvel Universe with all this stuff. You know, see, throw a, throw a bunch of stuff at the wall, see what see what hits, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. 
What else is there? What else is there? I don't know. There's nothing else. <laughs> well, that was a lot. Dude. Let's put it this way. That was a lot more than what we've had in like the past month. There was a lot of news in a short burst. This is the longest episode of Bruising Blasters we've ever done. Yeah. Yeah. What definitely. are we at? We're at time to go. Yeah. Yeah. How you feeling? Great. Yeah, I feel pretty good too. Feel good. Yeah, it's good to be back in the saddle again. Yeah. You know, we skip a week, you know, we did, we did our T2 commentary last week, uh, you know, put that on the site, that was a big hit. Thank you for everyone who's been listening to it and downloading it, that's fantastic. Um, but you know, it's great to be back here talking the wars. Yeah. Well, it's, it's great to have so much news, you know what I mean? So I much it. is going on now. I love it. You know, it, it really is, like, we don't really cover the news but we talk about what we want to talk about and there's oh, yeah. so much to talk about uh -huh. you know so I, I'm sure we're going to have even more next week oh yeah definitely for sure I can't wait to see what's going to go on tomorrow <laughs> right you know yeah I'm sure we'll be uh, we'll be texting furiously oh yeah alright guys well uh, thank you so much for listening uh, if you're new to the show or if you've been here from the start or anywhere in between thank you so 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 much uh, we do this for you and, uh, you know, you guys are the best fans in the entire world. And uh, we can't uh, can't thank you enough for listening. And you know, we're going to be here as long as you guys are. Probably be here anyways. I'm in. <laughs> you know it, buddy. If you want to get in contact with us, the email address is bruiseandblasters.com. Oh, man. I forgot to even announce this. We have a website address. Bruiseandblasters.ninja. Ninja. We also have .com, but bruiseandblasters.ninja. <laughs> so use that, and you'll be taken to all our shows. And uh, all our subscription buttons, too. So we're everywhere. You can find us uh, on social media. You know how to talk to us. We're usually on Twitter. Um, and uh, go to bruiseandblasters.ninja, because that's... I just like it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Chris, any any final last words? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> That's all for today, guys. For Chris Salton, I'm Joe Tavano. And uh, I'm just going to have another sip of my super cold. I'm afraid of all these days. I'm so like my summer's never show. Get clutch!